Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, Sergei Kovalev has pulled out of the purse bid with Adonis Stevenson. Right? It's bad news if you're a boxing fan who wants to see the best fight the best. But let's talk business for a moment. Let's take a step back and let's try to figure out what's in Kovalev's best interests. Right? Now, understand. <clears throat> let me be clear. I believe Kovalev beat Stevenson. I understand that if you have that belief, then if we go by boxing folklore, then that should be the fight that Kovalev makes. But the world's more complicated than that, isn't it? <clears throat> there's folklore and then there's business. Right? In the business world, Kovalev might be making a shrewd financial decision. Let's talk about it. Let's question our own beliefs. Let's look at not the folklore but the real economics of boxing. Now first let me talk about the folklore. <clears throat> the folklore and you know I believe that there's the very good reason and then there's the real reason things happen, right? The folklore <clears throat> is that sanctioning bodies issue belts. They tell us who the champions are. Right? We'll call this really one universe. They tell us who the champions are. Every champion has a goal of becoming the undisputed champion for their weight class. Right? They want to fight the best. They want to fight other champions. We'll talk about the major belts. The major belts, the sanctioning bodies I'm referring to, WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO. Right? We're talking world titles, not regional titles. Right? The biggest venues in the world, that's where they want to fight. Right? It doesn't get bigger than fighting in Las Vegas. Right? Doesn't Carl Frotch want to come to Las Vegas to fight? Isn't that what he's telling the press? Right? That's the folklore. So we the fans, if we buy this religion, right, we believe that these champions are trying to annex titles. Right? We're watching the belt. We understand that the belt's issued by a recognized sanctioning body. Right? I believe life is actually different. Right? There's a different faith out there. Right? In other words, we're playing different games. We have different religions. Let's talk about the reality. Right? Perhaps the important belts aren't the WBC, WBA, IBF, and WBO. Perhaps the real titles are actually issued by other groups. Perhaps there's an HBO title. Perhaps there's a Showtime title. Perhaps there's a PBC title. Right? We call Madison Square Garden the Mecca of boxing. Perhaps the real venues that put the most money in the pockets of the fighters are places like the Bell Center, the Barclays Center, Oracle Arena, Sheffield, Nottingham, right? Germany. Now let me say this. <clears throat> These fighters with deals with these media outlets. Let's say you have a deal with HBO. 
right? That deal has a floor. It has a guarantee. They tell you, we'll pay you at least this much per fight, right? You keep winning against opponents we approve. And understand, sometimes those opponents aren't the same people that the sanctioning body has designated as the mandatory contender. Right? HBO will say, you keep fighting and winning against the opponents we approve and we'll keep paying you at least this minimum right understand sometimes the pay is more than the minimum depending on the economics of the event right you're under contract with HBO there's some other fighter in your division who's generating a lot of buzz right HBO might say to you Fight him in this location. Let's say the fighter's Canadian. Fight him at the Bell Center. Right? Fight him, you know, at Barclays. And we'll bump this up. We'll give you more. Right? Now understand, in this world, where you have really an agreement with a banker, right? Isn't the network playing the role of the bank here, right? When you have a long-standing relationship and you understand that if you beat HBO's designated opponents, you're going to continue on in a lucrative deal. What the sanctioning body has to say or what the casual fans have to say matters less than what HBO has to say. Right now, let's just look at this carefully. Right? Kovalev has the WBA, IBF, and WBO belts today at light heavyweight. The only belt <clears throat> that Adonis Stevenson could give him would be the WBC belt. Think about it. Now I understand boxing folklore, right? What I would want as the casual fan is to see a unification match, right? I mean, really, we all fantasize about one belt per division, one champion per division. But there's a business reason why you have more than one champion, isn't there? Right? Let's say this goes to a purse bid. Adonis Stevenson has a belt. His real belt might not be the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship. It might actually be the Showtime belt. Right? He fights for Showtime. Showtime's his bag. So, of course, <clears throat> purse bids are perilous, aren't they? Because in a purse bid, any accredited promoter can walk in off the street <clears throat> and can say, hey, wait a moment. Slow the roll. We have a bid we want to make. Right now, I'm a fan of purse bids. But people here need to know that I am biased. Because I believe there's no money in boxing for most people. So my bias is with the athlete. I want to see boxers getting paid. Right? You know, a purse bid that's won by the highest bidder <clears throat> that generates the most short-term money, right, for that event, for the fighter, is what I'm all about. Right? I love purse bids. Love them. But I also realize that in most fights, there's going to be a winner and a loser. Isn't there? Right? Occasionally you get a Andy Lee, Peter Quillen draw, but that's, that's rare. Right? That doesn't happen a lot 
in boxing. This isn't soccer, right? That's rare, right? Most times there's a winner and a loser. Now, if both fighters going into the soiree have long-term deals with media outlets, right, have really long-term deals with HBO and Showtime, right, that they don't want to jeopardize with a loss. The problem is when a third party comes in, let's say, you know, some group backed by PBC comes in and wins the purse bid. The long-term contracts of the fighters with HBO and Showtime are jeopardized. Right? The fighters understand that somebody's going to lose the match. Stevenson Kovalev. Right? The fighters understand that. The fighters will realize that if their network, right, if it's HBO or Showtime, doesn't win the bid, then their long-term contract with that network is at risk. In other words, Sergei Kovalev has a decision to make. Does he want to risk his price floor? his long-term deal with HBO in order to get what would be his fourth belt. Is a WBC belt worth him jeopardizing his long-term financial arrangement with HBO? Understand he's hooked up financially for life if he just completes that HBO contract right hooked up for life right since most people consider him the light heavyweight champion at least those who believe in WBA IBF and WBO belts what does he lose, really, by saying, okay, I'm not going to proceed in trying to get the WBC belt because I want to continue to hold my real belt, my HBO belt, right? Really, what's going on here isn't that Sergei Kovalev has withdrawn from the purse bid What's really going on here is that HBO and Showtime, the belt held by Adonis Stevenson, haven't been able to work out their differences so that the match ends up on both networks, as will happen, right, with the Floyd Mayweather-Manny Pacquiao fight. Right, understand there, HBO got together with Showtime and they worked out a deal where both of them are able to participate in the bout. Right, they have pay-per-view arms, etc. You can imagine the bout's going to be rebroadcast on both stations. Here, I know the public is going to blame Sergei Kovalev. Right, I myself would love to see Kovalev against Donna Stevenson. But I also want to see these guys get paid, right? Neither guy, really, wants to jeopardize their long-term relationships with their real belt issuers, HBO and Showtime. If HBO and Showtime could work out their differences and find a way to actually make this fight happen, then I don't believe either of these fighters would walk away from the table. The problem, though, is in a purse bid, right, the kind of thing I enjoy, 
HBO and Showtime don't hold all the cards. Promoters can come in off the street, can win that purse bid, and then can deal with third parties like PBC. Right? To have the fight on outside of HBO and Showtime. So let me say this too. Let me introduce a few other concepts here. As opposed to just saying HBO belt and Showtime belt. Here's some things that fighters need to think about. Right? The first I've mentioned. You don't want to lose your floor. Right? There's no money in boxing as it is. If you're one of the very fortunate few, right, and that's the word, few, who have contracts that guarantee you a floor, that guarantee you hundreds of thousands of dollars per bout if you fight some network approved opponent. You can't jeopardize that, right? Because you understand that if you're a champion, like let's say Mickey Bay, let's name names, and if you don't have the HBO or Showtime deal, then you could get offers from networks of less than $100,000 to defend your title on TV. I believe in Bay's case, it's ESPN. Right? You understand that without the life raft, the financial life raft being given you by HBO and Showtime, you're working for less than the average salary of the man on the street long term. Right? Because understand when they offer you less than a hundred thousand dollars, right, you're only gonna fight once every few months. You understand that if you get beaten up in that fight you won't be able to get approved by a boxing commission for another fight for several weeks. Right? So, boxers don't want to lose their financial floor. The next factor is that boxers really have to take care of their support group. Right? The money from fights isn't just going to the boxer. There's an ecosystem around the boxer, isn't there? I believe smart business people understand that they have to literally financially take care of their ecosystem. Right? Your promoter. In Sergei Kovalev's case, it's main events. Right? Your network, HBO. Your manager. Your team. Right? Your nutritional consultant, for example. You need to take care of all of them. I think it's wise for a fighter to take a step back and ask himself, what's the best way to do that? If you have a long-term contract with an HBO or a Showtime, you understand you can take care of your entourage. You can take care of your ecosystem long-term. These people often have invested in you when you weren't making big money and are actually out of pocket, right? They'll even tell you at times that you owe them money for the advances they've made on your behalf. Welcome to the music industry, right? And so the point is, if you follow people's finances, you'll find out that Sergei Kovalev never really made big money until his last fight against Jean Pascal. Right? And so now he's just getting his financial footing. He's in his early 30s. He doesn't want to jeopardize that long term HBO deal. That's the real title that he holds. Let me make another point, too. You know, the managers and promoters also hold the title, don't they? Right? Let's say Kovalev's a daredevil. Let's say he says, look, I want as many titles as I can have. Right? So the WBA, IBF, and WBO titles aren't enough. I want that WBC title. 
right? A manager is going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a moment. You know, we want to hold on to these titles, right? We, we don't want to risk anything. Because sometimes the promoter and the manager have other fighters. They have a bigger vision, right? And they'll tell you, look, you know, if you pass up this opportunity, there are going to be other bigger opportunities down the road, right? Peter Quillen walked away from the middleweight title. You know what Quillen has already had? A follow-up fight against the reigning middleweight champion. It didn't cost him. Right? There are other fights out there for Peter Quillen. Understand. Danny Jacobs, Peter Quillen, both from Brooklyn. Right? Or both in Brooklyn now. PBC just had a fight. The Peter Quillen fight being one of them. At the Barclays Center. That pulled more than 12,000 people. Right? You can imagine Danny Jacobs, Peter Quillen, if that fight ever happens, that's a guaranteed sellout. Right? Casual sports fans are looking in the moment. They're saying, why isn't Kovalev fighting Stevenson? Maybe there's a bigger picture here. Maybe his manager, maybe his promoter have other guys on the horizon out there that would provide more opportunities long-term for Kovalev, right? While protecting the deal he has with HBO. Let me also say too, that we need to just consider the fact that the folklore we've been sold the idea of fighters fighting the best immediately. The time horizon that fight fans believe in might actually not maximize profits for the fighters themselves. Take a look at Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather. Right? We all wanted this fight years ago. I remember when this fight was originally announced, I was thrilled. I said, okay, great, let's see this happen. Then of course Floyd wanted then of course Floyd wanted drug testing. Right? Negotiations fell apart. That was years ago. Do you believe in real dollars that these guys would have made years ago the huge money, nine figures each, that they're gonna make today? By keeping us waiting, haven't they maximize their value the gate already is the most lucrative gate in boxing history by a wide margin right sometimes the public wants an event today if promoters can keep us waiting just a little bit more sometimes tomorrow actually pays more doesn't it so let me say this. I'm a casual fan. I want to see the best fight the best today. I'm extremely disappointed, extremely disappointed that Kovalev has backed out of his talks with Adonis Stevenson for a matchup. I'm extremely disappointed. Right? But let me say, in a sport where I believe that there's little money for most right you know we talk about the one percent in real life and the 99 percent right nowhere was that more apparent than boxing right there's a one percent getting paid and then you have the other 99 percent you have some pretty good champions out there who don't have deals with hbo and showtime right or the pbc for that matter when you find a fighter who does who has a long-term deal in addition to the recognized belts, WBA, WBC, IBF, WBO, all of us need to consider the HBO belt, the Showtime belt, the PBC belt. 
right? Kovalev understands that perhaps the most important belt he holds right now is the HBO belt. They're the ones paying his bills. They're the ones guaranteeing his exposure, right? He didn't want to risk that to a purse bid. Because what a purse bid does is it allows non-HBO people to participate in the bidding, right? And he didn't want to do so, to pick up one title when he already holds three others, right? As disappointed as I am, I understand that boxing is a business, right? I'm not going to rip any fighter for doing whatever he or she needs to do. To maximize their income and to recognize the business part of the sport right just understand the business part of the sports a bit different than the piece of the sport you and I as casual fans are seeing that's how I see it let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com thanks for stopping by